today's the day. It's the day we start the final dress, day one. It's freaking hot, let's see how long we are able to sit down here. Where did I put my lighting? Okay, first things on the agenda, I'm gonna cut out the skirt first because I have to clear the entire table to do that. And then that sounds like a hassle to do later. Um, so I'm gonna do the skirt and then we're gonna get into how I'm gonna do the bodice. I got like four yards of material, so it should be plenty of material for how I wanna do it. And then once that's done, we cut sequins and I'm gonna cut the bodice out and then I'm just gonna start cutting rows. Just cutting row after row after row after row. Yeah, I'm gonna wanna flip it inside out so that I can draw lines on it, I think. Yeah, okay. Get ready. I wonder how long this video is gonna be. Okay, I have it laid out one layer because each of the pieces of the skirt are individual. There's a bunch of excess over there. So I'm gonna cut out the biggest piece and then I think I'm gonna move it all this way and cut out the two smaller pieces is my current plan. And then the rest of it will go to the bodice. There's gonna be a, a lot of excess, I think. Yeah, it's also, it's very thin and lightweight, which will be nice. To cut out the bodice, I used a large scrap of material actually, and I just lined everything up on my table to make sure it was all evenly folded before I cut anything out. You hear the Tesla in the background? It's my neighbor. They're gonna think I'm weird. So I ended up taking like a day off, but there's um, a hurricane coming in this weekend. So the weather's finally cooling off. So I think I'm actually gonna like have enough cool time in the garage. So I'm gonna cut out another set of the bodice and then I'm gonna start working on the sequence. And I'm gonna see how much we can get done today. And also I think that the the tool, the mesh is almost here actually. It was like really close like a couple of days ago. So I think we could get it sooner than later. Um, it just, it might be delayed by the hurricane. It's literally what we're waiting for, basically. <laughs> okay, it's time for me to do the sequins, but I'm gonna try to do it semi-efficiently. Not that I can't get more of this literally like next day. I need to remember which measurements are the four inch and which ones are the five inch. Or no, are the, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get this laid out and then we're gonna see like how it's looking, like how much we have. You see me manipulating the fabric a lot here, which I normally wouldn't recommend, but because the sequins were sticking together and also this is a knit fabric, it's fine for this circumstance, but normally you wanna just kind of like let it lay flat and as even as you can possibly get it and don't do this kind of stuff. Okay, I think I'm going with one and a half. I don't, I don't remember how my math looked. It's been like two days, OMG. Okay, so we have, what did I say? 79 inches of sequins. And I also need to cut the bodice out of the sequins. Heck. Okay, we're gonna go with one and a half. These five are the four inches. These five are the five and a half inches. So it's 52. Okay, so let me do some more math, I think. 43.875. Minus 52. Okay, so this one is gonna have eight and one eighth left over, which then 59.375 minus 52. This one is gonna need seven and 0.373 eighths. Okay, so that's just two layers. And 78.75 minus 52. This one needs 26 and three quarters. Okay. Okay, so this is what, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine already on the top. It's 36 inches. Okay. So, 29. For the first half is 36. 43. Okay, then I have 43 inches left over. Okay. <laughs> can go from there, I guess. Okay, but 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 75. Okay, I don't have, I don't have enough material because I need basically all of this for this. So I'm going to have to order more sequins. I'm also uh, going to stress about how much of the pleated mesh that I have until then. So, um... You know what's really funny about me putting that piece of paper in that drawer? Um, I recorded this video over the course of a week, and since I put that paper in that drawer, I have not been able to find it, so it's nice to know where that went a week later. I didn't look for it just every day, you know? I definitely didn't do that. I need... And I just did it by five. I didn't even do it by five and a half, so what was it? 15 times 5.5. Okay, I need 82 and a half inches. And for the four, I need eight times four, 32 inches plus 82.5. Okay, so I need 114 and a half inches. How many inches are in a yard? Okay, so I need a minimum of three and a half yards to to do the skirt. And then I need, I'm gonna need, let me look at my patterns. Cause that's also gonna take like a significant amount. Okay, so I need at max, I'm gonna say 12 inches for the bodice. So, 14.5 plus 12 divided by 36 is three, I'm gonna say like 3.6. So I need four yards basically, because you can't order it in halves. I need four yards of this, and I think I ordered, I ordered four yards. Wait, please tell me I, I ordered four yards. I ordered three yards. So we need to take out some width somewhere. If I can eliminate half a yard, that's all we need. Cause then the rest of it, I can piece it together enough and then be fine. Okay. 36, okay, 36 times three. So I have 108 inches to work with. Rick, this is why you do this math before you order fabric. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, wait, I was gonna see if I cut, if I, if I shorten our pieces, so I need eight of these ones. So if I do three and a half instead of four, that moves it to 28 inches. If I do, let's see, it came out to like four. So if I do four and a half, and it was 15, 67 and a half plus 28, 95 and a half plus 12, 107 and a half. I currently have, I'm gonna have 108 inches with like no jiggle room. And if I, if I cut this section down to three and a half and four and a half. Oh my goodness, this is not how this is supposed to work out. It always goes right for me. I'm gonna order another 79 and I need 108. I need 29 more inches, so I'm gonna order um, another yard. And I think I'm also gonna order some interfacing. And it should come within the next like two days because I'm so close to them and they ship out so quickly. Okay, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna cut out the, the bodice. Good chat, oh my God, I'm stressed. 15 minutes of math, my God. Okay, the patterns are, um, they're pinned on and then I just, traced a new straight line across, uh, made sure it was as square as I could get it because this material is a stretch. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing I did when I was making the sample. I'm gonna cut the straight line, I'm gonna cut these out, and then I'm gonna start marking out sections to just start cutting out, and then we'll start sewing them together and just 
like start uh, making, making sure they're all the right length and uh, hoping for the best. Let me also just recommend that you keep a vacuum uh, on hand after every cut you're gonna wanna vacuum up the sequins that you lose. Otherwise you get a big ol' mess. And I can say that from experience. Okay, I have four three and a half inch sections cut out. I'm gonna cut out these four and then I'm going to make sure that they're the correct length and if I have to cut some off and then add some on, I'm gonna do that. And basically just get the first four, or at least the first three layers figured out and then I'm gonna keep cutting. But I just wanna make sure I'm not cutting like too many of one size since we're trying to get as much fabric use as we can. If I did my math right, then I should have an excess of eight and an eighth inch, but I'm only gonna measure out, I'm gonna subtract an inch from that so that we have a half inch seam allowance to sew it together. So I'm gonna just measure out, oh, and I found this marker that's like, um, I have this like bin of fabric markers, but yeah, it was just the only thing that was showing up and like I'm cutting through it anyways, so. It's basically just like a fine point Sharpie. Okay. And then that should be excess, but let's just like measure it just in case anyways. Okay, I need 43 and 7 eighths. Well, it's not 43 and 7 eighths. Okay, I have a new line marked. Oh, but then I need to add an inch to that, so it's still like an inch off. Okie dokie. We have our first scrap. Who knows if we'll get to do anything with it. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my post-it notes and I'm gonna tear it in half. And then I'm gonna write in Sharpie a number one. And then it gets pinned onto this piece so that we know this piece is layer one. And then I'm gonna set this aside. And that's basically how I'm gonna do the rest of them. Okay, but I need to add some to this one. Let me just make sure that like, any of my measurements were correct. The wind is picking up. We're supposed to have a hurricane tomorrow, so sorry if there's a little bit of wind noise against my garage. Oh, okay, so it's actually 53 inches. It was 53 minus 59, um, six, so I need to add six inches, but I'm also gonna have to add, so I need to add eight inches. This piece is eight and a quarter, so we're gonna add this piece. Yippity doo da, yippity day. Okay, I'm gonna pin that. And then I'm gonna make a, uh, I guess they all have to be sewn, so. Okay, this is number two. Pin. Um, okay, and then I'm just gonna keep using this method until I have the whole top section done. So I have the first five rows done and figured out, and then I will probably sew those, and then we'll work on the bottom section, I think is my current plan. I had enough sequins to get eight of the 10 layers completely done, which is really nice. Then I only have to worry about the bottom section, but now I'm gonna move on to the top. I cut them all out, I got them all the right lengths, and then I just sewed them all together. I made sure to add all of my seam allowance when I was doing my math. These are done, they're just waiting for the pleated material to come in before I can do anything else with those. But I'm gonna work on the bodice now, which is gonna be kind of interesting the way that I plan to do it. So I can do like a little bit of the top until the pleated mesh comes in. I can do the top one way or I can do it another way. And I think I'm gonna have to wait until I know how much fabric I have for the top after doing the pleats. Yeah, which I have just realized that the bottom ones shouldn't be full circles, so I need to I need to take out one of the seams. 
whatever that's easy but basically my plan with the with the bodice i cut out one layer of sequin and then two layers of lining so i'm basically gonna take a layer of lining and i'm gonna baste stitch around the edge in the seam allowance the one layer of sequins to one layer of lining and then that'll be like one piece in the way that I want to is I want to make half of it and then drape the pleated mesh over top of that once that is like semi finished. So I can at least run a basting stitch through it and sew my lining together and get my lining like half finished. So I'm gonna do that now. My camera's gonna die, lol. Okay, it's literally just pinned on the dress form piece by piece, but you can barely see just the base stitch that I ran all the way around. Um, and this is how we're looking right now. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So I think I can semi finish the lining and then we're gonna have to wait until our fabric gets here. I love waiting. I'm just waiting for fabric, uh, but it is at my local post office. So I'm hoping it'll be here in the next day or two. It was probably delayed because of our hurricane yesterday. The weather is supposed to be cooler today, so I can get lots of work in, I hope. Um, so I'm gonna focus on the skirt today, and we're gonna be sewing it all together and getting it all figured out today. We're gonna do some super fun seams. I'm so excited. Okay, I have my three skirt pieces and everything's covered in sequins. That's not gonna change in the near future. Okay, so this is my front piece. And then these are my two back pieces. So I think I'm gonna sew my center back seam. And then I think we're gonna press everything and get rid of just all of this junk while it's still semi-flat. Okay, I'm gonna sew our center back seam. Um, yeah, because there aren't too many, you know, imperfections. And then we'll press. No, I'm a liar. I'm going to press first. I'm going to press first. Okay, camera's going off because it's just ironing. You guys know what ironing looks like. For the skirt, I'm going to do French seams because I hate myself. So the back of the skirt, I have a notch that's seven inches down from the waist for my zipper, just for ease. I don't have to do seven inches. Usually I want to say it's like two to three inches, but I was struggling to get it on the dress form when I had like a general three inches. So I just take it down a little bit further. It'll give me a little bit of wiggle room for the way that I'm going to do the zipper because it's going to be a little weird, I'm, I'm thinking. The way that it, my brain is kind of trying to plan it is like weird, but I'm going to do the center back to the seven inch down notch and I'm going to sew the initial seam at a quarter inch. Yeah, and then we'll and then, and then you trim it, flip it, sew another quarter inch, press it, yada, yada, yada. You get it. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do that now. This is like the wiggliest seam I've ever sewn. Stabbed myself. Okay, I'm gonna press this like completely flat, um, just cause it like, freaking stinks and then I'm gonna trim it to like an eighth of an inch just so there's no excess sticking out of our next seam and then we're gonna flip it press it flat again and then sew another quarter inch seam the way I was taught to iron a French seam is to iron it open actually but I find it easier to trim it and then iron it so I just iron it to one side and then I just flip it and I iron it flat how you're gonna sew it to finish the seam okay so our finished French seam is so nice it's all finished but now you're not gonna have any fraying edges <clears throat> at all nice Okay, let's put the side seams on and then see where we're at. So I never actually explained how to do a French seam. So basically for a French seam, you're sewing your full seam allowance twice, basically. So your first stitch, you're gonna put your wrong sides together and sew half of your seam allowance, trim it, press it, 
um, and like flip it so that it's now uh, right sides together and you're gonna sew the other half of your seam allowance and then that just gives you a very finished nice seam so you don't have to like overlock it or I don't know, like you know it's just another another nice way to do a finished seam french seams are really nice if you have like a sheer fabric and you don't want your like overlock to be seen or if you're trying to cut down on like the space that a seam takes up without like just trimming it down i like french seams a lot i think they look nice okay i'm rambling i pressed both of my side seams to the back and then this one had some it had some popping because it was like a little like gathered and tugged um, and that's just because of how I sewed the material because I didn't use a fine enough needle. So that's on me. But um, to fix it, I'm just going to run like a semi-close top stitch. And that'll also hold this down. It'll make it easier for when we're sewing on our ruffles. Yada, yada, yada. Top stitching, or yeah, top stitching these down. It'll just make everything flat and nice and finished. Okay, I just pinned this skirt onto the dress form with <laughs> all my math pinned on it. And um, yeah, basically I can mark the length on these, but then I can't really do anything else until my fabric comes. So it's literally been like four hours, um, but this, the mesh came or tool or whatever, but it's here. So I'm gonna clean up my messes get it laid out so that we can start cutting it and yeah yes and then we can start ruffling and the more the sequins and some more options um in case we don't have enough of this i had some ideas of how to get around having to order more of this specific fabric so that's all supposed to be delivered it's scheduled for delivery for tomorrow so I'm just like fingers crossed, hope, hoping and praying that comes tomorrow because then genuinely I can get so much of the dress done tomorrow. It's not even funny. Like I can get a lot of it done tonight as well. Just like getting the ruffles started and, and pinned on our lovely bagged dress. So, so I gotta, I'm going, I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Okay. Um, so this one's gonna be a little weird because of the way that I have to cut it, I have to cut through the weft, which isn't actually a thing um, because it's a knit, but we're just gonna, we're gonna just continue to refer to it as the weft um, because of the way that the pleats lay. And so that means we're gonna be cutting down our, our yardage basically, but I think, Okay, bro, little bro, open up. Okay, I'm gonna lay this all out. Like I think that this is the way that we're gonna wanna do it. And I'm really gonna rely on my table below, I think. Except it doesn't have freaking half measurements. Okay, I think we're actually just gonna go like this. And then I'm just, I'm just gonna go screw it and I'm just gonna pin everything together and hope that it's um, slightly even and then we're gonna like do you know a little bit of shaking. We're gonna just shake it all out. I was gonna say who cares if it's even but um, I actually I have to care if it's even. so awkward like what the heck like it's like sticking together because it, it's like sticking in its own pleats i'm literally gonna have to do this like row by freaking row oh actually that okay okay they don't have to be perfect rows they don't it's fine okay at least like this first little section here is fine and I'm also gonna do this first section as one of the four and a half ones. The selvage is so annoying. Okay, I'm just gonna mark it like the four and a half from the edge of the selvage. Actually, you know what, screw it. We'll just do three and a half because then I can use that as like for our first row. I'm terrified. <laughs> I'm terrified. 
can't be on camera anymore, it's too scary. Okay, I got all of, all of my rows cut out. This is how much I have left. I think it might be enough for the bodice. If not, I have backup coming tomorrow, but I'm gonna wait until the rest of the sequins get here to yada yada yada, do that, ba 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 ba. But basically now I have to, I already did this one, base them all together into either circles or the bottom five are gonna be open as well as the top two. So like this is the second one. So I'm basically just finding like the halfway points on both and then matching those up and then praying. And also like I was right about my, <laughs> the mesh being like super uneven with how I was cutting it, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. It's a rough dress anyways. This is pain. Also sewing the mesh together is a nightmare. So I got like the top five, like all of the individual like pieces all sewn together. And I was like, I can't, I need a break from this. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna, I, uh, I'm gonna be here forever doing this. <laughs> I can already tell. So I won't, I won't make you guys join me for, for too much of it. Okay, my sequins came today. I knew they were gonna come today, but I didn't think they'd come until much later. The color is ever so slightly different. It's not gonna matter though. Thank goodness I did it this way because I only need this for the bottom two layers and they're gonna be the, like, the most weathered. So they're gonna be like covered in paint and dirt and stuff. And also like when you put this over it, like you can't really tell the difference. You feel? So I'm gonna start cutting these out immediately. And then my backup materials also came. So I ordered two different ones. The mesh is a lot darker red. I mean, they're both not perfect. I just didn't explain a lot when I was recording this video, I guess. So here's why I got those two fabrics. I basically thought I wasn't gonna have enough of the pleated piece. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just get something that looks close, hopefully. And I chose two different fabrics knowing that the, co the colors would probably be slightly different. So I got power mesh, which is super stretchy and um, just a regular red tool. Cause I was thinking that if I didn't have enough material, I could just like hand pleat them basically with my iron in case there was any like little bits that I needed to um, improvise. If say I didn't have enough for like one section of the back piece or I didn't have enough for the arm pieces or something really random like that, I thought, okay, I'm just gonna emergency quickly grab these because I know they'll come quick. I have to order stuff from here anyways. I don't just wanna spend like $10 here and then have to pay like $15 in shipping to get it, you know? So I was basically just like, I can always use a fabric. It's nice to just have extra fabric. You get me. So that's why I, that's why I got that fabric. Yeah, I think we're probably just gonna have to go with this and what I have left of this. So we're gonna, we're gonna, it's gonna be very interesting finishing the top, I think. I got like a bunch of these done yesterday and I got them all like sewn together. But sewing while standing is weird and like all of your weight is on your one left foot. So like my left foot is sore and also like my hip, so that's fun. And then I also got an elastic for the arm cuffs and the neck strap. And I got a zipper. Their zippers at Sci Fabrics are like 80 cents and this like yard of elastic was like 30 cents. So I literally can't. I can't recommend this website enough. It also came in three days and two of those days had an active hurricane warning. So like, they're just fantastic over there. I have to get as much done as I can this week because I'm starting a job full-time on Monday. So I gotta get at least the dress finished this week, which is super doable, super, super doable. Okay. You, however, have seen all of this before, so I'm gonna save space. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see it because I can barely see it, but I went in and I made these tiny little marks to mark out all of the sections of the skirt the exact same way I did it on the um, sample. So now I'm gonna take all my little ruffles and layers and I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up just so that I'm not having to like move ruffles to like sew under them and everything. So that's the plan now. And I'm actually feeling pretty good about my timing right now. Like this is gonna take a while, but it shouldn't take like horrendously long. 
When I'm pinning on the ruffles, I always pin the two edges and then I found the middle of this length and I pinned the middle, as I had already sectioned out, the middle and the two quarters of each ruffle. And then I'm going bit by bit and I'm ruffling, pulling on the top thread of my base stitch until I feel like it's got kind of an even consistency throughout the line. You'll see in a few spots, I have a bit of trouble ruffling it where there are seams on the sequin pieces. It just depended on the piece if it was gonna give me trouble or not, honestly. Okay, the bottom ruffle is, it's pinned on, but I feel like it's gonna wiggle around like a lot and also like it's gonna be just the biggest hassle to sew on the sewing machine. So I'm gonna run a hand sew stitch through it just to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna sew it on the machine just so that I know everything is kind of staying where it should be, staying even. Yeah, okay, good plan. Fun update, I got the first two layers hand stitched on and Thank God I decided um, to not trust my math because like like the first two layers laid the pretty well. The next two when I started pinning them on, yeah, surprise, surprise, my math was wrong somewhere. So I started pinning them on and then I was like, this is taking so much work. It's like literally the biggest hassle in the entire world to pin these on when I literally am gonna have to move them any moment now. So I think I'm gonna make like a little like paper template of how big each one is, take it down the skirt, figure out like which measurements are right and wrong and how I was off by like inches on all of them. Like I really didn't think shortening these was gonna be that big of a deal. I'm hoping it's just the bottom ones, which is fine because I feel like it was a little long anyways and most of this was gonna end up in the trash. So if I just like take it up, at least I'm only like unstitching hand sewing on these rows, <laughs> yeah. But it's so weird that like th these two were fine. And then I started putting this one on and I was like, wait a minute, is it just this one? And then this one's like the exact same problem. So I don't, I don't know how my math ended up so wrong. So I took everything off, you know, approximately like two hours worth of work gone in, in three seconds, but it's fine. We persevere. I'm so glad I was hand stitching. But I went in with this like chalk pen that's like three different colors. It's kind of silly. And I just drew each of the individual lines, the ones that I knew worked. And then uh, I just like measured each of them until I got to the problem. And what do you know? It's like the last three are the only problem ones. And it's like somehow my math went from like four inches to five inches for two of them. The two that were the problems. Yeah, so I, I love that. Don't know how that happened, honestly. But I gave up on doing math and I just did it the old fashioned way. I just took my last line that worked. I took a tape measure and I just marked four inch intervals all the way down. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put all of that back on again. Yay. This is also your reminder, mistakes like this happen and it's okay. And don't give up when this stuff happens because even professionally trained masters of the craft make mistakes like this still. This stuff happens to me all the time. Another thing I did was each, because each row has like different lengths and stuff, I folded it like twice and I measured out like the half and then the quarter of each of these because I have each of my rows sectioned into quarters and I started sectioning them with safety pins. So if I have to take it back off, I know I don't have to like re-measure and figure this out and like ungather it all. Yada, yada, yada. Anyways, safety pins make great placeholders for like pins, straight pins that you really don't want to fall out. Okay, quick update. So I got the bottom five rows sewn on the skirt last night, just hand sewn on still um, because they scare me. But I just started sewing on the shorter layers just to make sure everything still is, you know, working out properly and that I don't have any more mishaps, but it's looking like really good. It's looking like really good and I'm, and I'm very excited. I'm very excited. It's definitely like more sparkly than hers is, but I think that our layers are really working out. And then like once they're all finished, they're gonna be, they're gonna be so nice. It's gonna look so good. Yay, it's 
it's all coming together. It's all doing it. I'm doing it. The skirt is all done, or I guess all attached together. All the ruffles are on. So now I'm gonna sew the bodice together and then we're gonna drape this over top of it since this is like at an angle. So I'm gonna sew our princess seams together first and then we're gonna drape this on the front and then on the back and then they get attached together because of the way that the wrap works. It has to connect at the side seam. So we can't sew the side seam until we have that connected. But then also we basically have to like, it's gonna be really interesting. I'm gonna sew like this much of the side seam to then attach the lining on and then finish sewing the side seam because like I want this seam to be finished. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a whole thing. It's gonna be an adventure. Let's just, let me just put it that way. Hopefully I explain it better than that when I'm actually doing it. Okay, I did the princess seams and now I'm gonna put each individual quarter of the top on the dress form and drape the pleated mesh over top because it goes on at an angle. Here we go. The first thing that I do when I'm draping this on is make sure that I have enough material on both sides of the fabric so that I have enough to cover the entire side seam and up into the armpit. Then I check my reference photos to get the exact angle of my pleats. And then I'm just manipulating the fabric and stretching it so that I have a good amount of gathering all over the dress, but it's also more sporadic. Like none of the gatherings of the pleats are even in all of the reference photos that I've seen. Okay, so I I think I have like a nice mixture of like really tightly pulled together and also like some movement in it, you feel? So I'm gonna very carefully pin it so that it's like just pinned along the edge and like in the middle in a few places probably so that I can take it off. And then I'm gonna run a base stitch around the edge. A yeah. I recorded this before I draped it because um, I forgot I had to drape it. I was just so excited about sewing the lining on. I'd been thinking about it for days and how I was gonna do it. So I got I got overexcited. So I filmed this before I draped it, but this is basically just me explaining how I'm gonna sew the lining on the front pieces because it is a little complicated to get the fully finished, nice, flawless look that I want. All of the pieces are done. Here's how I'm gonna sew them together to get finished seams into another finished seam that yada 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 okay so i'm gonna sew up approximately like half of the side seam so like this piece is probably like two inches i'm gonna sew like even less than that of the top get the two halves so i'll keep like them separate get the two halves connected and then sew the lining on Ooh, i need a strap don't i Rick. Okay, I I gotta um I I can just leave that open and put that in before I attach the skirt just because I don't have that even figured out yet. Oh wait, no, I can't do this yet. I have to do the arm thingies first. Heck. Okay. Well, I'm I'm just gonna sew like that little bit of the side seam then. But the the lining pieces are all top stitched, and then the the regular pieces I hand. Sew top stitched it. Okay. I have my two halves and my incomplete lining because I'm gonna do the strap first. So I'm gonna do, my plan was to do like three quarter inch. That seems so short, so thin. I got this elastic to go in it, which is three quarter inch elastic. Yeah, we'll stick with three quarters. So I'm just gonna make a tube. I think I'm gonna do 24 inches, I think is how long I want it to be. I took some like weird ass measurements, but then I'm gonna make the elastic inside like an inch and a half shorter probably. I also need to do the armband thingies. So I think what I'm gonna do is at least for now, just do, cause it's, the strap goes like this and then the armband thingy comes out like 
this out from behind the strap. I'm just gonna make a couple three quarter inch tubes, one for the strap that'll be long enough, and then two to go out to meet the armband thingies. And I don't know how long those are gonna be. So I'll probably make both of those like also 25-ish inches. Yeah, but we're actually like kind of cooking. We're like genuinely really close to being done with this. So, yay. Okay, so each strap is gonna be two inches to start because then that gives me a quarter inch of seam allowance on each side and then it's three quarters. Okay, my camera died while I was making the straps, but I mean, one one strap and then like the old connecty tube. But basically this is the only one with elastic in it. They're all three the same size. I did this one differently, like marked three different points along both the, the casing, the satin casing and the elastic because they were like a two inch difference, I think. And then I just lined up like one edge of the fabric and then sewed a zigzag stitch and then lined up the other side and sewed a zigzag stitch. And then I just, cause I hate myself, hand stitched the edge over top. To line it up, I took my notch that I put into my pattern. I basically just went completely off of this notch, angle and all. I just put, this one still has the pin in it. I put a pin in it exactly like straight and then I lined it up and I went, yeah, that looks good. Now I have to figure out the angle of these. Um, and then I'm just I'm gonna reinforce the strap connection. And then we get to freaking sew the lining on and be pretty much done with the top. Yeah, wow, I'm an idiot. I sewed on the strap wrong. Um, it's fine, it's an easy fix, but I think this is kind of like the general idea that I want, but I have to take the straps off and flip them and put them on properly now. And not like a dum-dum. Okay, I'm doing them one by one. Yeah, but I got this whole top line stitched. Now I'm gonna go in with an under stitch. I'm basically just gonna open it and sew the seam allowance to the lining piece. That'll just like help it roll, especially with how freaking thick all of this material is. Then sew up the side seam. Um, I'm gonna do the under stitch and then sew up the center back-ish. I guess I should probably, I'll probably only understitch until like here until we've decided how to do the zipper. Cause that just makes it easier to manipulate all of this material if it's not understitched. Sorry, there's like a frog in my throat. It's like 10 PM. Okay, I'm pressing this, but like you can basically tell on the understitch, I get this nice roll where there's a little bit of like the front fabric over top of the lining. So there's no chance you see the lining on the front. And the section where I didn't do that, it's like, it just wants to, to roll right at the seam. So you have more of a chance of it like rolling over and showing the lining. So I like under stitching a lot. I use it all the time. It's more subtle than a top stitch, but it basically does the same thing. Pretty much the rest of this video is me figuring out how I'm going to do something while I'm actively filming it. So if it feels really like choppy, it's because when I'm thinking, I take lots of pauses in between the words that I say. So I'll say something like, so I'm gonna, do this now and so I'm cutting out like milliseconds to save up time because this video I'm not even done with it and it's already like 50 minutes long so if it feels choppy that's why I also decided halfway through editing that I hate the way that I sound when I inhale for some reason I just don't like it so yeah also if it feels like weird and the pacing is a little weird it's because I'm actively f trying to figure out what the heck I'm doing while I'm doing it and while I'm recording it. So it's just these 20, 30 minute long clips that I'm cutting down to like two minutes. I actively went into the rest of this video with no plan at all. Like my brain just wasn't processing it at all. Hmm. Okay. The lining situation has just reached my brain. Okay. I'm gonna unstitch the, this seam that I just sewed up, but only on this side. This side should be fine, because this side goes over top and it's gonna tuck in. Okay, and then pin it so it all matches up, and then pin it to this one, and then sew up this side seam, and then sew up this side seam, and then make up what's happening with the lining on the inside after that. I hope. I think that should be good. 
I also need to make sure that the strap isn't twisted at all. I think I literally just twisted it. Okay, so we have that. And then I wanna go like this. Lining up seams and notches and notches and seams. Doing our best. We're doing our best. I'm gonna run a base stitch along the bottom and then I'm gonna sew up this side seam. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's like three quarters of it done, I think. Okay. And then this side, getting a clean lining is gonna, it's gonna be a challenge. Okay, so I basically, um, I think I'm gonna sew this in a few pieces. I think I'm gonna be doing some hand sewing on this. Okay, so. Now I'm basically gonna hand sew these together so that I have a clean hem seam. Okay, we're just gonna, yep, okay. 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 All right, I'll say it. I went crazy with this. Petticoat obviously isn't trimmed. It's looking so freaking good. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna go perfect the top and watch a movie though. Yeah. I genuinely think like we can get the sewing done tomorrow. <gasps> oh my gosh, wait, but then that means if once the sewing is done, this episode is over. Episode five, baby! Oh my god, I wonder how long this episode's gonna be. I didn't film a lot in the middle because it was just so repetitive, but oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. All right, today's the day. I'm finishing up the skirt, so I've done like two rows, but I'm just going in over the very edge with this like a kind of wider zigzag stitch just so that it like really gets all of the edge in there and then once that's done i'm gonna go in and take out the basting stitch so that there's like no seam on the ruffle yay yeah that means skirt's gonna be done the top is laying over there i finished it up last night and then it just needs connected onto the skirt Ooh! yay yay okay skirt ready to be attached and to attach it I have to figure out how I'm putting in the zipper so I know I talked about doing a lap zipper I'm still doing that but it's gonna be a little bit more complicated than that so I'm doing a lap zipper on the top and then it's gonna transition awkwardly into just a regular like railroad zipper but like semi hidden under the ruffles if that makes any sense it's probably gonna like it's it's gonna make no sense but so i sewed up our center back just the seam allowance i left the overlap on both sides at least for now and then this side i like closed it because like this side's gonna be the bottom and then this side's gonna go over top and i just marked our center back and my plan right now is i i sewed the center back of the skirt with just a basting stitch so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna top stitch it open and then take out the basting stitch like a little bit, I think. And then I'm basically gonna have the ruffle on the skirt match up with the edge of the overlap. And then it'll like just be tied on on the one side, like the one side will overlap on both sides. And I'll probably put like a, um, either like a tiny snap or like a hook and eye to keep them in place if that makes sense. And then the ruffles on the other side will just like match at the seam, I think. That explanation made no sense. So uh, editor's note of me showing you as the dress is finished, what I did, but I haven't like fully finished it yet. There's a couple hook and eyes that still need to go in it. So basically the skirt piece of the zipper is just like a regular railroad zipper. And then both of these section of ruffles are gonna hook an eye across like this. And then this side of the zipper should technically be in a seam, but because I left the underlap, like I just put it on top and I can go in and fix it later if I want to. And then the way that you, that you like sew this and line this up is I marked where our actual like center is on both of the overlaps on the top and the bottom. And then I lined it up on the bottom and I pinned the zipper and then I hand sewed it on. I still need to fully 
like finished sewing the zipper on on my machine, but I just sewed it onto this side and then I pinned this side over top on like along the edge and then I basically just pinned the other side of the zipper to the top piece and stitched it on. This side probably isn't going to get a, a machine stitch so that it stays nice. Um, I'll probably just go in and reinforce it by hand more. And then I'm gonna take hook and eyes and I'm gonna hook an eye on the inside here and then on the outside in probably like three spots along here and then this ruffle. Okay, I'm sure this is just like a jumbled mess of fabric, but I got the waist attached. So now you guessed it, I'm gonna do some more hand sewing. So I'm gonna take the seam, um, our waist seam, and I'm gonna hand stitch it just like I did like all of these seams where I kind of hand stitched it to the lining piece. And I'm gonna hand stitch this like literally quarter inch thick seam up into the bodice. And then I'm gonna hand stitch the lining over top so that it's a nice clean edge. Um, and I could do that stitch on the machine where you just like get it all pinned nicely. And then you sew literally like, oh my goodness, there's too many layers. You sew in the seam line, it's called stitch in the ditch. Um, I prefer to hand sew it. I just feel like I get a cleaner edge. It's just my preference of doing things. And then like, the dress is done, except for the arm pieces that I still don't know how I'm gonna do. I have an idea, but I don't like it. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go hand sew. Well, the sewing's all done, except for like a few little pieces, but this is where we're at. So, man, it's gorgeous, <laughs> at least for now. There's a couple things I need to do. I need to put in some hook and eyes here to help conceal the zipper, um, as well as like finishing up just that. Obviously, like the rest of it, but it's looking like pretty flawless, genuinely. And this like literally could not have gone better for me, I don't think. It looks so good. The strap is like perfect. I'm gonna leave these like this for now until I figure out exactly how I'm gonna do the armbands. But, um, OMG, I think that's it for this episode. Finally. Well, with that, uh, the fabrication is done. So, on to the really fun part. If you liked it, hit like and subscribe. It costs you nothing. You can always unsubscribe later. Leave a comment if you have any questions or if you just wanna chat about it. I feel like there was a lot I didn't film in this video, but um, I was just trying to get it done as quickly as possible and kind of just going through the steps. I'll see you guys next week on Friday. We're gonna get dirty in the next episode. I'm obsessed. Oh my god, I'm obsessed. Also, this skirt probably weighs like 10 pounds. Like, not joking. Well, time to dust out the paint, the dirt, the, the scissors, you know, probably an exacto knife. And I almost don't want to wreck her. Yeah, but I'll see you guys next week. My God, I need to go edit this now. I've been sewing for days. So it'll be so nice to sit down. I fucked up my ankle. My God, and my calf. My body's a mess now. Great.